the Crypt Keeper of Creepy, the provocative Prince of the Tweens, the Nightmare from Neptune. It's Zabu Jard! There was a big spider on my lap when I sat down. I think he might have bit me. I put him outside. I put him out front. Maybe he laid his eggs in my legs through the bite. Don't know. Still... Still wearing the Kabbalah stuff. It's midnight right now. It's midnight. Civilization that was disappeared in around I don't know when they left. I should say 1776. Because a lot of the buildings that they left behind to us that the Masons didn't destroy have the number 1803 on them. That means I do think that our current timeline could be around 1800 that we're in right now. So right now we could be in 2000 or 2100, something like that. Um, I don't know. Could be in 2200. Um, they left all their buildings behind. They all disappeared. Maybe they went north, to the North Pole, to the North Star, to the Magnetic North, to True North on the Compass. Maybe they went on vacation, maybe they're going to come back soon and see that uh, the Masons destroyed all their homes and their buildings. What are they going to do now? What are they going to do then? There's the quote-unquote Great Fires of 1806 or whatever it was, 1871, right? They destroyed 99% of all their buildings with all of the explosives that the Masons set off to destroy the old world, okay? What if they come back? What if they come back and they're pissed off that... that we destroyed all of their buildings and their homes, most of them anyways, that the mud flood didn't destroy? You know, plenty of the buildings right now are probably down under the mud, under our streets, under our houses, covered in a thick coat of mud. Okay. Where did they go? Maybe they went north, where all of our compasses point. Why did God put a north star that can guide us north and put north on our compasses? Does God want us to go north? I think he probably does. Past Antarctica, past the ice wall, just straight up north. I do think maybe God wants us to go north. Don't ask me why, don't ask me how. Look at this hellish freak show realm around us though. It can't be worse than this place, can it? I don't think so, I don't think it can. In fact, I'd probably bet that it's way, 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 way better than this hell realm we're in right now in this area that they are trapping us in. The Titanic probably went north. MH369 probably went north. All these missing planes and boats and trains and tums and parts and parts and bin, they all have submarines, they all probably went north. The Bermuda Cum Triangle, a lot of those missing crafts, maybe they went north. Think about it. 
think about it. You know? Listen to Albert Pike's audiobook, The Magic of the Kabbalah. That's about an hour and a half. I'd recommend you listen to that if you're interested in this sort of stuff. Or if you're interested in spiritual stuff or something. He, uh, he had a lot to say about stuff. <sighs> what I want to talk about next is. All of our fake history that was created by AI. Fake numbers, fake names, you and I's name, you and I's fake last name, you and I's fake middle name, our DNA that they collected over the last couple of years. Everyone's DNA has been collected through gay little websites like 23andMe, through gay little apps like 23andMe, and I forgot the other big one, but. Now they've got everybody's DNA. Are you and me clones of our past lives, of our past selves, of our past lives? In the last civilization, when they had, or did they have our DNA, you and me specifically? You and me were alive in past lives. In the last civilization, our DNA specifically, they destroyed it. They kept our DNA. They allowed our DNA to be brought back into this realm, into civilization. 3.0 How many times they've reset civilization? We don't know how many times they've done it. We just know the last time they did it was probably about 300 years ago or something. And everybody came here on orphan trains and all this shit. All the new young kids stayed in orphanages. They stayed in the Odd Fellows orphanages, the Shriner hospitals, the Shriner Mason hospitals and orphanages. You and me's great grandpa, most likely. I asked my grandpa, he was adopted. I asked him about his parents, he said, I was adopted. How many of your great-grandparents or grandparents were quote-unquote adopted because they were brought here on effing orphan trains and we were, probably came from north on a vacation down here to the Hell Realm. Now this Hell Realm's pretty gay and retarded. All the smart people left, the giants left. The people who built all these giant buildings left. Kind of, unless they're underground. Probably some of them are still here. Right? How many times has society been reset like this? And if a human is resetting society, he must have the technology to live forever. Whoever this human is, most likely is some sort of machine cyborg creature thing who can live forever. And if it's not a human, it's probably a machine, an AI machine. Or it's some sort of mostly AI machine with a little bit of a human tinge inside of it. You know, what, who built it, you know? So this AI creature robot, how many times is it resetting human civilization with a mud flood with DEW, direct energy, come weapons like they did in Nauri in Chile this week, right? And um, how many times did they reset society? Where did the last society go? Then they give us all the old technology from the last society over a few hundred years. They give us a new toy every 20 years. Keep us busy. Keep us retarded. Keep us having fun. Have a new toy. Here's a boombox. Have a new toy. Here's a video camera. Have a new toy. Here's some cartoons. Have a new toy. This is a condom. Have a new toy. This is sex. What's it called? Um, this is birth control. Have a new toy. This is the VR virtual reality. Have a new toy. These are GUNs. Have a new toy. This is cars, trains, planes, TVs, computers. You know, every couple of years the AI lets out lets us have more little toys that the last civilization had. Okay, and then nobody writes on books anymore. When they, when they reset this civilization soon, which they probably will, how are we gonna? How is anyone gonna know you and me even existed? Since all of our data is backed up on computers on the internet, when they wipe out computers, when they wipe out the internet, hey. It'll be like, you and me never were here. We never existed. We never wrote a book for the new people to find. We never wrote anything down. All of our traces are digital. Online. Everything's online and digital now. It's like you and me are digital. There's nothing of us that's real. When this place is gone, we're gone. Why 
why is this person, creature, machine, robot who lives forever, why is he resetting society over and over again? How does that make sense? If it's not him doing it, then let's assume a couple of bad boys came here after the reset and they wanted to control everything, put up some orphanages, corralled all the new humans around. Surely there's some sort of puppet master behind all this gay crap. All this gay, retarded, idiot, stupid, n-word, fag crap. All the re all the civilization, all the resets, all the all the controlling and corralling, all the fake history. His story, history. It's just a story, right? It's not real. It's fake. Created by the AI, who gives us all these stupid names like Michael or Matthew or Matt or or. Um, Booker, or Susan, or um, Trusen, or um, you know, are these all stupid made-up AI names from an AI-generated list of names? Tom Green. Why are they using the color green as a name? You know, why did the why did the AI put green as a name when it's a color? Think about it. Um, so many questions I have about this game. Retard realm and stuff, and no, not many answers. I'm starting to think that unless we find some really important books, which I'm too lazy to read old old books, old Greek books, anyways. And the only way to really figure out what this realm is is through really deep meditation. Seriously, you might go crazy. You might go lazy. You know, I lay down a lot. I told you guys my hobby lately is laying in bed and watching TV. After I wake up, I sleep for, you know, I sleep for eight or ten hours. When I get up, I lay in bed and watch TV for, you know, another three or five hours, you know. Then, I get on my chair and watch more TV, but at least I'm in my chair and not my bed. I'm too lazy to make cartoons most of the time. It's hard to make cartoons. And so on, 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 and so on. Um, these are just questions that I have about the real puppet master behind all the resets and the AI nonsense we see. AI's been around for a, you know a long time. It's just that they're releasing it now to the public. But the person in charge of this realm probably is probably an AI cyborg or something gay like that because. They're not super creative, right? They can't make up good names. They can't make up good stories for history. You know, all the all the history have have these retarded, stupid lies, like like that Thomas Edison uh, flew a kite and got the lightning electrocuted and discovered electric fucking toaster ovens through getting a lightning strike on his kite ball sack or whatever. He tied a kite to his balls, got electric. It's the stupidest bullcrap ever. George Washington could not tell a lie, had to chop down a cherry tree, all these nonsensical, stupid. The British are coming, the British are coming, all these silly little stories that they tell us, all these silly stories. Oh, they're, they're taxing our tea too highly. We have to revolt. The tea taxes are too high. The rent's too high. You can't keep getting away with it, Walter White, Mr. White. You can't keep getting away with it. You know. And all the movies we see now, The Little Mermaid, The Lion King, all these gay little stories, they're just from the last civilization. They know what people like. They know what people like to read, what they like to watch. Whoa, you know, Cinderella was so innovative. Oh, it's just a princess story they, that they wrote last civilization probably, you know. The AI, they've probably tried so many stories, so many songs that they've pre-written. Then they give these artists all their pre-written songs. There's one guy who writes most of the music for all these big celebrities. How does he come up with so many hit songs? So many, so many different hit songs? Could it be that he's just given a list of what worked in the past? So, oh, people like, used to like this song. Okay, time to release this song to the public. Every morning, shut the door, baby. Don't say I come fucking with. You know, it's just like... It's just, it's just everything here. 
just feels like a big fake lie from the media, from the TV, from history books, everything, science books, science, gravity, all these gay theories, evolution, gravity, all this gay shit, you know, all a complete sham, lie, idiot, retard thing, you know, all for, humans have been around for you know, thousands of years. But, you know, just a couple hundred, just a hundred years ago, they finally figured out how to make a light bulb, how to make a car, how to make a train, how to make a plane, how to make a phone, how to make a fucking, how to make a bicycle. How to make a bicycle? Hasn't the wheel been around for a long time? Now they just figured out how to make a bicycle? Give me a fucking break in the ass. I don't think so. I like to lean on religious texts for truth, like the Torah, Old Testament, New Testament, I mean pretty much just those two, the Zohar, those are what I'm leaning on right now for truth about whatever is, if there's even any truth in this area realm we're in, then I hope I can find it and grasp it. Because of course all I want is truth. But this realm and everything around us just looks like some big stupid lie. It just seems like everybody's running around like a chicken with its balls and cock cut off. And its head cut off. Not knowing what it's doing, not knowing who it is, where it came from, who our real ancestors were, what they were capable of, their old world tech, their religion, their buildings, their thoughts, their ideas on things, their books, their, their media, whatever, their writings, their poetry, their exercises, their games. Oh, baseball was just invented. Oh, now football's invented. Oh, well, now basketball's invented. How did our, our game has been around so long, nobody could think of how to make basketball or baseball or football or soccer until we came around a hundred years ago? We were very sus in the ass. Very sus. Who tens? Oh, what a... What a mind-blowing game. All these games are just mind-blowing, powerful, wonderful games that us geniuses invented through evolution in the last hundred years. The most wonderful, creative, intelligent games of all time. Half-Life 2. Time Splitters 2. Mario Kart. You know, soccer. Boxing. Whoa. What's next? Wrestling? That's crazy. Whoa, skiing, luge? These are some intense games here. Snowboarding, skateboarding, parachuting, sky gliding, wall climbing Mount Everest. You know? I'm just a little grumpy that I was born into hell. That's all I'm grumpy about. I know it's cringe to be grumpy. It's I'm trying to be grateful here, but... And then you know what I think about, too? I was thinking about... The other real humans who aren't in hell realm with us right now, who are in Antarctica or whatever. You know what they're thinking about right now? Maybe they're thinking... The way that you and I think about people in Africa. Like, man, I'm glad I wasn't born in that crappy country or... I'm glad I wasn't born in Mexico or Africa or Spain or, um, Spain's probably pretty nice, I guess, or, um, Vietnam or Thailand, well, Thailand's pretty nice, I guess. Glad I wasn't born in North Korea, glad I wasn't born in, yeah, well, Guinea's probably okay. Glad I wasn't born in the Congo, glad I wasn't born in the, uh, uh Argentina with all the, the snow, Kokan cartel fightings going on there. Glad I wasn't born in Canada where they, well, yeah, where they're forced to get a medicine in their body to have their bank accounts and all this gay shit, you know. I mean, the whole world is very quickly devolving into communist, um, evil, retarded, nonsense, bullcrap, right? Into Satan's world, Satan's kingdom, you know, this place is turning into Satan's kingdom. ASAP very, very quickly, I think. It seems like the case. I look up in the sky, see chemtrails 24-7 everywhere. It seems like Satan's working pretty hard on, at least on poisoning the skies all the time in every one of our cities 24-7. So he's definitely working hard. You know what I mean? He's working hard. I'll give him that much. I'll give him that much. So you, you and I have to work just as equally as hard. Do you understand? you get what I'm saying? Our own spiritual and physical development here. You know, our own stuff. And 
And I know, I know Christians say that, um, uh, yeah. So, Christian, Catholics, Catholics are confusing because in one way they say you can only go to heaven through Jesus Christ, but then the next second they say also you need a bunch of good deeds. And non-Catholic Christians say, you know, they say you only need Christ, baptism, salvation, to follow and believe in Jesus Christ, okay? Very simple. But Jewish people, like Catholic people, believe you go to heaven, I think, through good deeds. It doesn't matter your religion, you don't need Jesus, all you need is good deeds, okay? Okay, interesting stuff, right? And, um, so which one is it? You know, what's really going to save people's souls? Is it going to have Christ taking everyone's sins? Is it going to be you taking on your own sins and trying to correct your own sins and stuff like that by doing good deeds and other gay stuff like that, right? Is it through Christ? Is it through good deeds? Is it through um, uh, meditation, through, through, through spiritual development, physical development? Um, becoming as pure and clean as possible inside and out, right? You know, which is the right pathway? Which is the right way? Which is the right path? And, um, I'm not saying anything against Christianity at all. It's just that I started studying Judaism because I felt like I, I didn't know what to do with Christianity, or where to go, or what to study, or what to learn. Because, like I told you guys, there's a cheat sheet for the occult symbolism of the Old Testament called the Zohar in Judaism. And I'm sure there's probably a cheat sheet for the New Testament, too, on what it actually means, the deeper meanings, right? Um, but it's not going to be as famous as the Zohar cheat sheet, okay? The Zohar book. The Old Testament. I, I mean, I'm sure there's some guys out there, maybe, who have written a cult, um, deep dives into the New Testament, right? But I don't, I don't really know who they are, besides maybe Bill Donahue, I think, is a big one. Bill Donahue, if you guys are into that, I would suggest him, I guess. Um, the other creepy thing about Judaism and the Kabbalah, right, is that all, it seems like a lot of the most evil, wicked, demonic, evil, black, no soulless, disgusting, evil, wicked creatures in this realm, mostly in Hollywood and other places, dark and spooky places, right, is that a lot of them are very infatuated with these particular beliefs of Kabbalah and, um, uh, maybe Talmud, Zohar, I don't know, but I'm guessing because, I mean, definitely with the, at least with the Kabbalah, which is, you know, intertwined with the Zohar, which is intertwined kind of with the Old Testament. And then they end up using black magic, using these tools to, um, to, to alter reality and bring reality, this realm, we're, we're now in hell and they're, they just, every year they bring it down deeper, deeper, deeper into a deeper, more black pit using their black magic, using the opposite side of the tree of life or something like that, you know. There's two sides to the Kabbalistic tree of life. There's the front with, with 11 sephirot, I think. Each one has its own letter, 22 Hebrew letters. And then there's the back, which is the evil side of the tree of life. It's like the tree of death. And it goes downward. Instead of upward, it goes downward. And it also has each one, all, each sephirot in there. Tree of De Death also has its own letter. The circles that you see in the Tree of Life, those are called Sephiroth, like, like from Final Fantasy. And then groupings of those Sephiroth are called Partsufim, I think. And so there's like big ones, like there's like, there's like seven or more or something, main like Partsufims that you could study, that people study for, on this stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I don't like the idea of studying stuff that the most evil, wicked, depraved creatures on, in this realm study. But I am intrigued. And I wasn't sure what to study in the New Testament, or where to go with it, or what to look for, what to learn from it. Um, besides the Jesus stuff, 
And I do really love the parables that Jesus tells and the stories that he tells. I really do like them. In fact, my favorite parable, actually, I don't even, I, I don't even know if this is the New Testament or the Old Testament, but my favorite parable is the, the parable of the prodigal son. It's my favorite. So I'll look that one up if you don't know what that one is. Or you could write what your favorite parable is if you want, or your favorite proverb or song or verse or whatever. The big verses people like in the New Testament are John 3.16, Matthew 2.38. You know, ones like those. I don't really know people's favorite verses in the Old Testament because I don't really... Well, I don't really talk to Orthodox Jews. I'm in a Hebrew Bible study thing. Um, but I don't know if they're actually Orthodox. Maybe, you know, some of them probably are. Um, so you know, yeah, I'm trying to trying to trying to learn the stuff and then I'm, um, pray about it and and and, and to teach you guys stuff too. If if, um, if I find out something, uh, um, you know, find something cool, because I, I would imagine God would want people to teach stuff about Him so that other people can also learn about Him and then get in a deep relationship with God as well through other people teaching them stuff or telling them stuff, I don't know. If you were God, I would assume you would want your children to try to know you or pray to you or learn about you or grow with you or grow in you or, or be part of you, you know what I mean? So... But then on the other hand, it's like, do you really need to teach other people who don't necessarily want to be teached or taught or want to know this stuff or care about this stuff. So in Christianity right it says people who don't know Jesus Christ who aren't children go to hell, right? Well in Judaism they say as long as you like do good deeds, it doesn't matter your religion, you can still like live a good life and go to heaven or kind of I think kind of like that in that sort of way, right? But then um so then in Judaism, it doesn't say, I don't, I don't know what it really says to go out and, and spread the gospel, spread the word like it does in the New Testament, right? Because in Judaism, they think that like everyone is like perfect in their role, kind of. Like so, you know how dogs and cats are retarded and they don't know what they're doing? So they're not, they're not doomed to hell because they, they don't know Torah. They can't know anything. They're too dumb. You know, the, it, it, Judaism goes with the, the first, you know, ignorance is bliss. It's kind of an overarching um, thing there. Because if you're ignorant to all this stuff, and you don't live a super wicked, depraved life, then maybe you'll be okay, is what I think maybe they're trying to, to say, kind of. But then as soon as you start kind of learning this stuff, then you're no longer ignorant, you're no longer in bliss, you're no, no, you're no longer a dog or a cat who doesn't know English or Hebrew and just likes to play with tennis balls and stuff, you know what I mean? It, it, it changes your responsibility, I guess, you know what I mean? Um, anyways, I'm running out of money still, so um, that's a little concerning. Because uh, I gotta pay rent and uh, running out, De definitely running out here soon. So, yikes! I'm gonna have to start working. I haven't worked in, jeez, since um, two October's ago. Which was more like two September's ago. What month is it right now? February. October, November, December, January, February. So it's probably been like 17 months since I've worked. And I'd like to keep it that way, I think. But, um, yeah, I guess maybe I have to start working and stuff, so. Pray for me, pray for yourself, pray for others, I don't know why. I guess I have to figure out a job thing pretty soon here, you know? Um, I'm not sure what else to do about that money stuff. So. Um, there's an eclipse coming in April, two eclipses could end the world in April. 
could end the world in two days at the Super Bowl for a huge full flag event, full flag event. You know, a BOM, you know, maybe a VIRUS, maybe zombies, maybe an alien abduction, maybe UFOs, maybe some really gay crap like that. Or maybe just Trannis Kelsey uh, proposes to Taylor Swift, who's actually not Taylor Swift, she's actually the daughter of Anton LaVey, who started the Church of Satan. Um, that's, that's actually, if you look up his daughter, that's actually Taylor Swift, she's Anton LaVey's daughter. Um, everything is fake and lies, of course, it's a stupid world, men are women, women are men, you know, all this stuff. All the celebrities you see, they actually have a penis. Most of them, I reckon, all Hollywood is probably men, probably male and gay. And all the women there even are also probably men with penises. So it's all a lie. It's place is disgusting, evil, rotten to the core. Um, so what Kabbalah can do that people work on is they try to enact world peace through like studying the letters, studying Kabbalah, and like meditating and praying and stuff. And they try to like. Um, fix this world which is broken. They try to repair the world. It's called like Tikkun Masala or something. Tikkun Masala, maybe, I think. Um, not sure. Anyways, hope you guys are doing well. Hope I didn't bore you to tears. Hope I can make some cartoons pretty soon, even though there's not, not a huge point to making cartoons if. You're not even making big fat cash from them because I'm gonna run out of money and stuff. So it's just like it's just a hobby, you know. It's just a hobby that I've been doing for. It's just a just a hobby I've been doing for 20 years with virtually no monetary gain. Nobody seems to. Well, it doesn't matter. It's. I've been perma banned and shadow banned so many times by the cocksuckers who run this website and all these websites that it's almost like Satan's demons are gunning for me that they don't want me to make a single drop of cash because I don't know, but hopefully I still make some cartoons every week. Because, uh, I don't know. In hell, when they destroy the internet, all, all the cartoons are gonna disappear, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So. Love you guys. God bless you and your families. Talk to you guys next time. Bye bye. Now it's time to have a snuggle with my very best friend in the whole wide world. You. <laughs> well, I'm glad you could come over. See you soon. Bye.